Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Humanities. So, Bachelor's Degree Programs, Bachelor of Arts, Honors, English, BEGH. Ability Enhancement Compulsory, AECC. BEGAE 182 English Communication Skills. Block 1 Understanding Communication. Unit 1 The Process of Communication. Communication. 1.0 Objectives The aim of this unit is to tell you The process and elements of communication Different types of communication Barriers to communication Difference between written and spoken communication After you complete the unit, you should shift your attention from English as a subject of knowledge to English as a skill that you can train yourself to use. 1.1 Introduction what I is communication? We all engage in communication with others right from our birth. When we interact with others, we are communicating with them. Right now, I am communicating with you through this unit and while you are reading it, you too are in fact communicating with me through this text. It is often said that we live in an age of communication characterized by speed, efficiency, and the ability to transcend physical or geographical limitations. But what does it mean to communicate? The dictionary definition is to exchange thoughts or make known information or feelings by speech, writing or other means to transmit. Communication is more than just messaging or swapping information. It involves not just words, but the use of all our senses. With facetophase dialogue, our facial expression, tone, body language, ability to listen with patience, all contribute to the conveying messages and information between people. For example, the written word, whether in books and magazines, emails or texts can convey more than just the writing. It can inspire, elevate and encourage if that is the intention of the writer. It can also confuse and exasperate if we are not careful. Linne Truss, in a recent book on punctuation, pointed out how easily the meaning of the written word can be altered just by rearranging the punctuation. She invites us to compare the following two sentences, a woman without her man is nothing and a woman without her man is nothing. As human beings we have the ability to express ourselves and share our thoughts and feelings in many ways. We could live in isolation, never communicating with another person, but that would not create value. We can keep feelings to ourselves or we can share them. Each person has his or her unique view of things and each perspective is valuable. Through sharing these individual ideas or views with each other, global solutions may be found. Someone may share an idea that the other person may not have even considered. These differing views could be compared to a jigsaw puzzle where each person has their own piece and when the pieces fit together, the full picture emerges and a solution is found that may not have been considered previously. Certainly increased communication that uses technology can be enormously valuable. Being able to share information quickly between people has meant that a disaster in one part of the world can be responded to in another. It has led to the fall of corrupt governments as people have been able to unite in challenging authoritarian regimes. People in remote areas fighting injustice have linked up with people on the other side of the world who can support their cause. As with everything, new technologies such as email and text messaging have the potential to be positive or negative. So don't you see the value of communication? One point to the process of communication. The following figure gives a simple model of the process of communication. Elements of communication. If we look at the figure given above, we can derive the elements of communication as follows. 1. Communication involves at least two persons, a. the addresser and b. the addressee. 2. The topic, the contents of the message. 3. The channel, the medium through which the message travels, e.g. letter, telephone, email, etc. 4. The code, the language of the message, e.g. English, French, Hindi, etc. 5. The message form, 
the selection of particular grammar and lexical choices of the message. 6. The setting, the social and physical setting. The role of the decoder. The process of decoding by the addressee is not passive as some people think. His her role is an active one. Language, it is said, does not have meaning. It has potential for meaning and it is a decoder who is actively engaged in making meaning on the basis of his her background knowledge and the context of communication i.e. The knowledge of the subject, topic, address addressee relationship, knowledge of the code, language used, the physical and social context, etc. Let us consider the following utterance. Mr. Gupta is not coming. The literal meaning of the sentence is not difficult, it is quite clear but do we know what the speaker wants to convey? Is it a statement for our information? Is it a warning for the hearer? We can understand this text only if we know what the context is, i.e. Who is the addresser? Whom is she he addressing? When, where and in what context? Suppose the addresser is the managing director, MD, of a company and the addressee is his secretary. The MD utters these words on arriving in his office and going through a fax message, Mr. Gupta is a consultant with the foreign collaborators of the company and he was due to arrive that day for a meeting with the MD and other officials of the company. If he poses this background knowledge, we will be able to understand the meaning of the sentence uttered by the MD. This sentence can now be called an utterance in this context. The secretary can interpret the utterance to mean, the meeting will have to be cancelled and the officials informed accordingly. Arrangements such as sending the car to the airport, hotel reservation, etc., if any, made for Mr. Gupta, will have to be cancelled, etc., etc. When we make an utterance we always do something, we use language to perform some function, e.g. to inform, warn, promise, persuade, etc. And the hearer or the reader can derive the meaning of the utterance only through actively processing the utterance in the context in which it is made. Macro functions of communication The macro functions of communication are listed below. 1. The emotive function to communicate the inner states and emotions, e.g. Oh no. 2. The directive function, seeking to affect the behavior of others, e.g. Close the door, please. 3. The phatic function, opening the channel or checking that it is working, e.g. Hello, is it Thomas Cook? Or can you hear me, Mrs. Gupta? 4. The poetic function, the particular form chosen is the essence of the message. This refers to the aesthetic function of language. 5. The referential function, to carry information. 6. The metalinguistic function, focusing attention on the code itself, e.g. The use of both will or shall is correct in modern usage. 7. The contextual function, creating a particular kind of context, e.g. Right? Let's start the meeting now. 1.3 Barriers to Communication It is said that communication can never be 100% complete. Many factors are involved in the process of communication and something can always go wrong with one or more of these. From your own experience, make a list of some of the factors that can impede communication. Let us now consider some of these barriers. A. Code, i.e. The addresser and the addressee may not share the same language between them. The addresser is speaking in French and the addressee does not know French. B. Vocabulary, the market declined under persistent beer hammering. One who is not familiar with the vocabulary of the stock market may not understand what is meant. C. Concept, technical and subject-specific concepts may not be understood by all. For example, a black hole is simple language, yet the concept may not be understood by many. D. Background knowledge and shared assumptions e.g. A Victorian-style mansion may not be understood by those living outside England. E. Pronunciation, intonation, 
accent and stress in spoken language sometimes may not be understood f culture specific communication may cause misunderstanding g physical environment noise and other environmental disturbances or even physical distance between the address and the addressee can impede effective communication h affective factors personal factors e g anxiety fear attitude motivation beliefs values lack of mutual trust lack of time or pressure of work lack of attention and personal rivalries all these factors impede communication 1.4 different types of communication communication may be classified into several categories on the following basis expression written oral and gestural flow internal vertical and horizontal and external relationship formal and informal various media of expression written oral and gestural communication can be achieved through various media such as writing speech gestures and actions one can use written words or draw pictures or one can use speech sounds speech is primary writing secondary that is speech came first and the writing system was developed later on there may still be some languages which are spoken but not written in fact several of the tribal languages do not have any script deaf and dumb people use actions and gestures in order to communicate with each other this is also a form of communication and known as sign language the visually challenged read and write using braille at the workplace communicating in writing or via email is the most popular form of communication it can take various forms such as letters circulars office memorandums newsletter brochures bulletins reports manuals house journals magazines etc you are already familiar with some of these this does not mean that oral communication is not used in workplace transactions speech is also used and quite often it takes the form of face to face interaction telephone conversations lectures and talks meetings and discussions etc expression through body language is known as gestural communication who is not familiar with the nodding of the head from side to side to say no or up and down to convey yes parents often use this means of communication with their children if they tend to be naughty in the presence of guests and it is often used in workplace situations as well in similar circumstances or when verbal communication is impossible g in the factory where the noise of machinery makes verbal communication difficult pictures charts diagrams are also used either on their own or in combination with written or oral communication for greater effect and better understanding business houses make use of them in their illustrated catalogs and brochures meant to promote their product downward upward and horizontal communication companies have to communicate with outside agencies and other companies government and private bodies newspapers advertisers manufacturers of machinery builders suppliers of goods and services clients and customers etc but there is also the need to communicate within the company itself eg communication between a superior and a subordinate ie from higher to lower levels of authority this is an example of downward communication there are communication also occasion when communication flows from a subordinate or subordinates to a higher authority it may be a report suggestion opinion or a charter of demands from the workers we call this upward communication both these are forms of vertical communication communication between officers working at the same level of management is called horizontal or lateral communication eg interaction between manager production and manager marketing it involves exchange of ideas information 